Colour grading 8-bit footage can be quite difficult, as 8-bit footage is very prone to breaking up. Cameras that can only shoot in 8-bit cannot capture as many colours as cameras that can shoot in 10-bit, 12-bit or even 16-bit colour. This means it's a lot harder to do colour separations, and if you push the image too far, it'll end up breaking up like this and begin to get very noisy. Today we'll be showing you how we colour graded this clip that was shot on the Sony a7 III, a camera that can only shoot in 8-bit colour. As we're working on a Mac, our timeline colour space and output colour space is Rec 709A. So now we'll move into the colour tab. The very first thing you should do when colour grading a clip is build out your node tree. And to add nodes, all you have to do is press Alt or Option S to create a new serial node. It means a node that comes afterwards. So we're going to create four of these, maybe one more. And then what we're going to do is create a layer mixer. So we're going to add some layer nodes, which means we'll be able to do some colour masking. So this is we're going to press Alt or Option L. So Alt, Option L, Alt, Option L. So now we have three layer nodes. And then we're just going to create one more node here, which will be our global adjustments node, maybe one for curves, maybe one if you want to add film grain. If you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can add film grain and then we can add some sharpening. This will be our node tree. This scene here will be our hero shot, which means this is the shot we'll be grading from. Of course, we can move around from the timeline and check for any mistakes or anything that comes along. In the very first node, what we'll do is go to the contrast and bump the contrast up. So maybe up to here. And you can really just do this by eye, so I think that's good enough. And then we'll come over to the pivot. If we decrease the pivot, the contrast will hit less and less of the midtones and the highlights. So if I was to do that, you can see the contrast isn't hitting almost any of the image. But then if we was to bring it up, you can see it hits more of the midtones and the highlights. Because I want the skin tones to be somewhat clear, I'm going to decrease this pivot here and then actually increase the contrast a bit more. So now you have a nice separation between, you know, the midtones and the darker areas and the highlights. To further amplify this, we're going to balance the clip. So if I quickly just label these nodes to make it easier for you guys, this will be contrast balance, white balance. It doesn't really matter which order you do these in. You can maybe do white balance before you do your contrast but it doesn't matter too much. And then saturation. We'll go to our balance next. In the balance, what we want to do is stretch the image out as much as we can to get as much information from the image as we can. We want the top of these waveforms to be hitting this upper limit of, of this graph. And we want the lower part to hit the lower band and we want the midtones to be as separated as possible. So this upper limit is highlights, this part is your shadows and this part is your midtones. So I'll go to the left and bring this down about here. And then with the gain, I'll bring this up just so make sure you're not clipping. We're not going over because as you'll see, the clip will clip. That was okay. And then we're just going to go to the gamma, which is the midtones. And we're just going to bring this up. As you can see, if you bring the gamma up, the lift will also increase. So what we need to do is decrease that lift. I'm actually bringing, bring down the gamma a bit. So that's okay. Now we've done this, we're going to add saturation. We'll come back to white balance. Come to your RGB mixer right here. We're going to increase the red output full and we're going to increase the green output and the blue output. And that's essentially how we're going to saturate the image. You can saturate the image using this saturation slider here, but I found with 8-bit footage, which is what we're working with today, this doesn't break the image up as much as this will if we put this to 100. So now we've put the color room, we can see where the white balance needs adjusting. In the white balance, what we want to do is make all three of these colors be the same shape, essentially. As you can see, there's a bit too much. There's a bit more blue compared to the greens and reds in the highlights. So what I'm going to do is go to the gain. And then what I'm going to do, and then what I'm going to do is bring a bit more blue into the shadows. So like so. So essentially, we've just removed some magenta. So now if we look at before and after, as you can see, the skin's looking more natural and less magenta. That's looking great. The next thing we'll do is move on to the layer mixer nodes. So this is where we'll do our color separation. So whatever's at the bottom is actually our top node. So whatever we do here won't be affected by these two nodes here. What I'm going to do with this one, so if I label this, this will be our skin. This will actually be our blazer. The final one will just be our sky. Go over to the qualifier over and click on the skin press shift h to see your selection and as you can see because we're working with 8-bit footage the selection will be very very blocky which is a problem with 8-bit footage doesn't mean that we can't work around so all i'm going to do is increase the width of this select more of that skin increase saturation maybe 
decrease the saturation a bit so you get a nice selection and then go to luminance the luminance will help you mask out the darker and lighter areas of the image so as you can see if i decrease this we're going to select more of the darker images the dark parts of the image so we don't really want to select the eyes too much so maybe about here and i'm actually going to increase the luminance so we get a bit more of that neck right here don't worry about too much if it's not perfect because it's only 8-bit footage it really does not matter too much especially the fact that he is quite far away it doesn't have to be perfect so what we're going to do is go over to our blur radius right here increase this which will just kind of so it won't look as blotchy and then i'm going to go to the denoise we've selected our skin now what you can do is you can go across and see if you've selected all of your skin in all parts of the image as you can see it's not selected here so what you can do is so if i decrease the luminance you can see we now select those areas i'm happy with that and then all you're going to do is press shift h to get back to your normal screen or you can press this magic wand to alternate between those two screens. The skin lies within the midtones usually. The midtones is of course the gamma, as we mentioned before. So what I'm going to do is shift this gamma towards maybe the oranges. As you can see, we've only selected the skin and only the skin is being changed. It's here in the layer nodes where your color grade is actually going to stand out from everyone else's. So what I'm actually going to do, I want his skin to be a bit more olive tone rather than orangey in this one because what I'm going to do is have the sky to be a bit more bluey give it more of a cooler look so I'm going to shift the gamma towards more of the yellows fine the main thing what we've done now is masked out his skin next thing we're going to do is mask out the blazer and then after we've masked out the blazer we can change all the color of the sky to a more blue color and that's where the luck will really start to take place so if I go to the blazer this one should be quick so if I select this press shift h you can see the blazer selected increase the blur radius a bit increase the denoise a bit and you can see we've selected the blazer what we can do with the sky is as easy as it is you can just go over to gain and shift this color so now we have this blue color within the sky and because we've already selected the skin and the blazer these are not being affected whatsoever by this node right here which is awesome this is why DaVinci is just so good. I'm going to bring the sky, not going to push it too hard, maybe here-ish, some more of a sky blue color. Drop the gamma a bit so we can see a bit more of the mountains in the background. You'll, if you do too much separation between the sky and him, it'll just look a bit fake. So you don't want it to look fake. You want it to look quite real. I'm happy with that. I'm going to come back into the blazer node and I'm just going to decrease the saturation. So we'll decrease the saturation of the blazer as well as drop the gamma of the blazer just to make it a bit darker. Now we've got nice contrast between him and the sky. Compared to a before and after, it's looking quite good. If you go across, you'll be able to maybe see some parts of his skin. It hasn't been fully selected. So if I go to shift H, you can see this part of his cheek hasn't been selected. So what you can do is increase that luminance a bit more or increase the width, select more of the lower saturated areas such as that. And now if you go back, shift h we have this really nice separation of colors so the next thing we're going to do here is we'll just type in global primaries but all i'm going to do here is come down to the gain drop this i'm going to shift some more blues with the gamma into the scene now we've got a much more cooler wet day kind of look and it's looking quite nice and the great thing is whatever adjustments we are making here in the global and the final look adjustments we can then go back into our skin say and then you know, if it's now, if the skin's not as saturated as you wanted it to be because we've added more blue into the midtones, what you can do is go to the gamma and shift, you know, a bit more orange or pink into his skin. You can have it looking like this. We've still got that separation. So that's looking quite good. Here, this one will be our curves. All I'm going to do with the curves is because there was some vignetting with the lens that the edges of the lens was a lot darker than the middle, which is okay but we can kind of fix that so if we make three points on our curve and we drop this midtones right here we just get a nice even tone throughout the whole image so we also decrease this you can see there's darker areas on the sides which is not what we want but if i was to decrease this and his skin gets a bit darker which actually looks kind of nice which i like i'm going to clip the whites a bit the highlights so if you look at this curve here we'll just drop the highlights just so we get a bit more of a darker look so i'm just going to bring everything down actually top part of this curve is highlights the middle part is midtones and the bottom part is shadows so same with everything midtones is the middle highlights is the top shadows is the bottom leave the shadows there actually because i don't really want to crush them 
I actually like seeing some of the details in the blazer. So I might bring it down a little bit, but not too much. I'm actually gonna keep bringing this down, but you don't wanna bring it too down as you lose texture in the skin. And it just fills out the skin a lot nicer as well. I think that's a bit too much. His skin looks a bit plasticky. So we're gonna lift it up just so we get a bit more separation. Lift up the highlights, maybe not too much of that. So this is before and after. And in my opinion, that's looking quite nice, especially for 8-bit footage that was shot on 1080p, 120 frames per second on the Sony a7 III, which is very prone to breaking up. As you can see, we haven't, the image really isn't breaking up too much, but as you can see, the hair is being affected in some areas where it hasn't been selected. So we can go over back into the skin, select some more of that hair. If you want to select more of a mask without taking away from the original mask, you just press this qualify plus button. And if I was select on his hair, you can see we've selected more of him, but we don't want to select that much. I just want to select a bit more of the hair, which is great. So now you can see the bit more of the hair is selected and we'll just increase the blur radius a bit more, and the denoise. I'm happy with the look overall. If you do have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can go here and add film grain. And what I'll do is go to 60 millimeter archival print, and then we'll just increase the grain strength. And as you can see, grain just adds really nice texture to the clip. And that's looking really, really nice. And the final thing you can do really easily, go over to your blur tool here, but we're actually gonna add some sharpening. So all I'm gonna do is go over to the radius, and if you was to increase this, you'll blur out the image. But if you was to decrease this, maybe to 0.47, you'll actually sharpen the image up. So as you can see, there is a noticeable difference in the sharpness. So let's go to here. You have that really nice separation from the skin to from the background. The blazer is not really being affected too much by the blue, but we are getting the blazer is still a little bit blue because we've added that blue hue. Um, in the global adjustment node and it's okay because it is quite a blue and cold day so it does add to it this was a before and after so before and an after i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and maybe you learned something new thank you